Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we are going to look into how to delete evicted pods easily in a one-liner in Linux. And we're going to use a uh, tool named AWK. It's actually a programming language that can be uh, that can be used uh, for a lot of uh, cool stuff. Uh, the first thing I want to, uh, to do is actually to show you where I got this uh, information. It's actually because I stumbled upon, I just Googled and searched for how to kill all evicted pods because I had some problems in my own Kubernetes cluster with um, some of the pods uh, were standing in, in the evicted state because of some memory problems. It's probably because I need to buy some more um, buy some more memory for uh, for, for my DigitalOcean cluster that I'm using. Um, and then I found this uh, this cute line right here, or this cool line right here. You can see right here, it says kubectl get pods, or PO is the same as pods, and then minus minus uh, all namespaces, and then grab for the evicted state, and then use this tool right here, pipe this into this AWK tool right here, which is a programming language where we can actually give a command. In this, in this situation, we want to print out uh, something. We want to take the second column, uh, which is the, uh, we want to take this, the second column, which is the pod ID, because we want to delete and all those pods, which is in the evicted state, and we do not want to do that one by one. Then th That is why this uh, one-liner here is so uh, awesome. And then the second thing we want to add is that we want to add the namespace, um, and then we want, to, and that is the f from the first argument right here. But we will take one, we will take these step by step. I'll show you uh, why, how the magic works. And then in the end, we're actually using a small utility named Xarx. Xarx actually executes some code that we have right here with the um, with the arguments from yeah that they'll be actually piping into this tool. That means it is executing this one by one, one at a time, uh, with with these arguments that, that we are providing with right here. Uh, but I'll show you this. Um, I'll show you this very slowly. So um, let us look at it right away. First of all, if I if I write kubectl uh, get part uh, get parts or get po let's see and then minus minus all namespaces. Then I get uh, this list right here, and look at this list right here. We have namespace, we have name, and then we have the state right here. And we can see most of them are in the running state, and that is great. That those are the parts that actually works. The ones that are not in the running state, that those are just just taking up uh, um, taking up space, and they're looking. Um, they're, yeah, it's just uh, it's, it's just a mess, right? So of course we also we should also look into the memory problem and solve that, of course. But right now I'm just um, not. But right now I just want to remove all of these evicted parts that I have uh, down here, which uh, has been stopped for some reason that we will also dig into um, just shortly. Uh, but first of all, now we this command right here, it lists all of these parts right here. And what, I, what I'm interested in is actually the name, so I can stop all of these uh, names right here. But I don't want to mark one line, then copy it and paste it, and mark one another line and copy and paste it to my kubectl delete uh, a delete pod uh, syntax, I do not want to do that. I want this to be a one-liner. So that is where this AWK um, tool actually comes in. So I can actually pipe this to a, a AWK, and then we can, yeah, first of all, we should only get the, the evicted. So let us start with uh, grabbing that. So now we will only get those lines where uh, we have the text evicted, uh, where the text evicted is, uh, is is included. So, or else you would actually uh, delete all of your parts if you did not include that part. So it's, it's quite uh, important. Of course, if you have a horizontal pod autoscaler or a replica set, then uh, your parts will be auto created if you, by mistake, actually delete your parts. But uh, you would have some downtime in your system because um, you would not have any parts uh, if you are if you are yeah if, if you're down to one part and you delete that last part of course then you would have some downtime on your system that is why if you want to restart something within within your cluster you would use the command kubectl rollout restart deployment and then the name of your deployment because then the deployment would ensure that it starts a new part before it tears down the old parts that's just a little bonus information right there but right now we're here we can uh, we can get the evicted and how do we continue from there? We use the AWK programming language because it is actually a programming language. Um, I'll show you how. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show a bit more about that in just a minute. But let us just finish. We, we want to solve the problem first, and then we can dig into something, uh, some stuff that are interesting afterwards. Look what I'm doing here. I'm saying AWK, and then 
this is the this is the program, so to say, and you can uh, you can make your you can make these programs in files and in script files instead of uh, just having it in one string like I have right here. Of course, you could just create a file that uh, where you had the same uh, what you had the same code inside it. Right now, the first line here is that we want to print something out. We want to print something out, and what we want to print is actually the um, the second column. So this, the first column is right here. That is the namespace. And then we have the second column. That is the name. So we want to get the name. So that is why we, we, we call print right here. And then the second part we want to add, uh, this uh, this right, uh, right here needs, uh, it actually says that we want to add this part right here to our string. We want, this is just a hard-coded minus minus namespace. And then we say dollar one, as soon as, as soon as you use dollars and then a number, then it will take that column. Uh, it will take that column, and that means that it will take the namespace. And then add after that. So let us just press enter to this and see what actually happens. Look what we get right here. So right now we get the pot name, including the the weird ID in the end. That's exactly what we need. And then we get the namespace also because that's also what we need. So this means that if if I could just write kubectl delete pot and then a line like this. Of course, I could I could just copy one line like this, paste it like that, then press the enter, and then I would delete that part. And the next time when I'm getting this part, then now I don't have now I will have one less part to worry about. Um, but we don't want to do that because right now I have like how many do I have? A lot, twelve, fifteen, or something like that. And let's say that you you could actually have even more. You want to be efficient, so you want to do this in one line, of course. So that means that you can actually. Um, pipe this into. Uh, you can pipe this into the xarx utility right here, the xarx utility, like that. And here I can write whatever I want to. So that means that I um, I can write kubectl, and then I can write delete pot. So this means that then I will actually take this argument that I have right here, and then I will actually pass it into the x to the kubectl delete pot. That is what the xarx uh, actually does. Um, so let us just run this right here and see what actually happens. Okay, first of all, we cannot see it. I'm shading a bit for, let us, let me just minimize this a little bit like this, uh, a little bit more. I just, uh, I didn't want to shade it with my uh, cute uh, face. So now it's visible again. Uh, now you can see it right there, xarx kubectl delete pod. So now I'm pressing enter and let us see if we get the expected result. Yes, now all of those pods has been deleted. And if I if I now write kubectl get pods get pods minus minus all namespaces. Uh, okay, I don't want to find that. I'll just write uh, kubectl get pods minus minus all namespaces like this then we will only get running and then we will do, then we would we will not have anyone that are evicted i actually have one already so that, that that's because there's actually an issue to dig into and if you want to dig into the issue I was, i'm actually lucky there was one pot left that is evicted because the way you would actually dig into this issue is by describing the pot i have a plugin for for my CCL, so I can just write KDP, uh, which is the same as kubectl, describe part, like this. And of course, I need namespace minus n for the namespace, and then Minecraft, that is my namespace for this one right here. And then we can scroll up a little bit, and then we can see that message, this node was low on resource, memory, container, blah, blah, blah. It needs some more, which exceeds its request of two gigabytes. Okay, so then that means that I can actually, um, I need to increase the memory for this part right here. I can do that in the deployment, and of course I should do that with my Helm 3 uh, scripts. But for now, if I want to fix it, if I want to fix it now, um, then I could... <clears throat> Then I could find my, see here we have memory, two gigabyte right there. So I'm right now I'm I'm writing kubectl, describe the, the deployments, and then I then I get all of my deployments inside um, inside Minecraft. I would actually have, exp 
Oh, yeah, that's because I, I took describe. I would say get deployment. So here we have the describer. My Christmas Minecraft is right there. Then I can say edit deployments and then in the namespace Minecraft. And then I want to edit this deployment right here. This means that now I can actually edit it uh, right, right away. And then I can change it from two gigabyte to three gigabyte instead. But um, you should you should actually you should not do what I'm doing right here. It's okay actually to do what I'm doing right here, but you should always, of course, have this as Helm 3 scripts. I've created other videos on how to use Helm 3 scripts, but this is not the, what this video is actually about. This video is about um, using this AWK um, programming language and the XArx utility. It's actually just about how to delete evicted pods in, a, in, a, in an efficiently manner. Um, if you search for AWK and Linux and utility or something like that, then you can then the first uh, hit you will get is at geeksforgeeks.org, where you can actually see which operations can you do with AWK. What, what can you use AWK for? You can scan a file line by line, split it into uh, into fields, and that's exactly what we did. We split our line into fields. We had uh, we had different columns, and then we actually took those columns right there. Then we can compare input line fields to pattern, if that's what we want to. We can perform some actions, and that's actually what we did. We printed something out. That is an action to print out something. We can then transform data files. That's what it's useful for. We can produce uh, formatted reports. Yeah, of course, we can do that. Format output lines. And we actually formatted output lines. That's what we used it, used it for, because then we could um, easily... Um, then we could easily... Um, I delete all the evicted pods. And here they have some good examples, and they have this employee test text file, um, and then they can actually get $1, $4. That means they will take the first column and the fourth column. Um, but we actually already saw that. Feel free to dig into AWK a bit more if you liked it. Um, it's just, um, yeah, feel free to do that. I don't think I will say anything more about that. I think we showed a, we saw a really good example. And now, uh, just uh, one one last thing I want to say about it is that uh, you can actually use if sentences. So it is it is kind of it is a real programming language, and you can also have um, you can also have loops. You can iterate through stuff. That's in the bottom of of this uh, guide right here. So, but there's a lot of good guides on AWK, not just on this uh, page right here. Um, there's also on. Yeah, do, 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 do. try to Google it yourself. But there's a lot of uh, cool uh, resources on the AWK. So as soon as you do something that where you have to copy paste something more than I would say two or three times, then use AWK instead. It is uh, it is cool, and you can always save save those commands to when you need them. You can also create an alias in your uh, in your Linux. Uh, in your Linux um, machine, in, inside your shell startup, in the, in the bottom of your shell startup uh, script, then you can add an alias that actually does exactly uh, this. Actually, let us do that. Let us actually create an alias. So I'll copy all of this right now. Copy. Then I'll go to my vi. And I'm using all my C shell, so I have a dot uh, set shrc file. If you use bash, then you would have a bashrc file. If you use shell, the, the, the basic vanilla shell, then you would have a shrc file instead. So you have you, already, you always have this rc file right here. It depends on which uh, shell type you're using. And I'm using oh my c shell, as stated. And there was an error right there. So, um, sh uh, C. I was, I was misspelling it. That, and then you see all of this cool stuff right here. And then you go all the way to the bottom. And I have made another video on the fact that you could try to see that there's a lot of cool, it's a very cool utility. When you mistype something out in the terminal, then you can fix it afterward by writing fact. So, but um, first of all, let us create an alias right here. I'll say alias, and then we'll say um, uh, yeah, clean up, clean up evicted, evicted parts, mm, something like this, and then you can say that is equal to that command right there. And of course, I could start a new terminal, uh, and then I, or I could source this file, or I could just uh, create this out in this terminal that I have right here. But no name was specified. Boom, boom, boom. 
maybe I need quotes around all of the stuff right there. Let us try to write clean up. Clean up evicted pots. Okay. That is, okay, that's because there are, there are a lot of uh, quotes in there. I need, to, I need to go clean up all my quotes. So that means that I need quotes around all of it. Can we just write a sync? Uh, okay, double quote right there. And then we need to escape this quote right there. We need to escape that quote right there. And then we need to end it with double quotes right there. Let us... Copy this instead. Let's see if it how it goes. Copy. Let us try to write this again. We say clean up, evict the pots. There are still some errors. How come? How come? How come? Okay, I need to look into how to make that as an alias, but uh, <laughs> it was uh, an honest try at least, right? So I'll just remove it. I might make an alias out of it, or I might make a, a shell script and then place it under um, um, in, inside the bin uh, in, the, in the in the bin folder. But that's actually it. That's what I want to show tonight. I hope you um, yeah, have a great evening, and I hope you come back at some point. Point, and hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.